We are live from the Spiro Clinic in Fayetteville, Arkansas with an amazing graduation today. Um, Nor, you were very special to me. You still are very special to me. I'm very proud of you. Guys, this girl worked so hard to get to where she's at. She never said no when we came up with ideas on how to get her to this point. Um, it was rough at times. We had quite yeah. the roller coaster with it's you. <laughs> um, yeah. But we're ending here with you ringing the bell, and that's the goal. You're in remission. You're at zeros today, which is amazing, and I'm very, very proud of you. So Thank you so much. I'm going to let you tell your story. Okay. I just wanted to start off by thanking all of you for taking the time to celebrate such a great day with me. Um, I really appreciate the support. Um, I'm going to quickly share my journey with CRPS and what it was like and just the treatments and how everything went since then. Um, so a little more than a year and a half ago, I developed abdominal pain. And after going through several tests and scans, um, the doctor said that my appendix was inflamed. So on the 23rd of March, 2023, I had to get into surgery and get it removed. Immediately after waking up from surgery, I was in severe pain, but I wasn't given any pain medications. Five days after the surgery, I started experiencing pain in my left knee. Um, the pain just kept getting worse every day. And within the next two weeks, it spread from my left knee to my whole left leg. And I lost complete mobility and function um, of my left leg. And I was diagnosed with CRPS fairly quickly after that. Um, I spent the first four months in a wheelchair and I went through intensive physical therapy, um, which after the four months, I was able to get out of it, but I was still fully dependent on crutches. Um, and from that time until September 2023, I went through multiple procedures and surgeries, trying to find an answer, trying to find a way to relieve the pain and make everything a little easier or a little more tolerable. Um, and I was told by my doctor that there was one last procedure that we could do. And I did that on the 7th of September, 2023. Um, I woke up in a lot of pain, and for the next few days, my CRPS pain was as intense as ever. Um, I was in denial at the start because I didn't want to face the truth. Um, I didn't want to face the truth that this surgery didn't work and that there was nothing else that I can do about this. Uh, as I tried accepting this, I also came to the realization that I was going to be probably in pain for the rest of my life. This put me in a very, very dark place, and um, I just couldn't imagine waking up every morning and opening my eyes, and the first thing that I noticed was just pain all over my body. Um, for the next few months, I struggled with self-harm and really bad um, suicidal thoughts pretty much every day. Um, I went to bed every night hoping that I don't wake up the next. I woke up every morning going like, oh, here we go again. I don't want to do this. Um, and um, it, I basically had just given up hope. And I came across the Spiro Clinic as I was scrolling through my phone. And I didn't really believe it at first. And um, even when I told my parents, they didn't really believe much of it. But when you're at that point, really, you know, you have nothing else to lose when you're trying you know it's like the last choice so there's nothing else that you're gonna lose from trying it and that's what we did and um i started treatment on the first of may here and since the day that i started a lot of the therapists did tell me that it was going to be a roller coaster um but i don't think anything could have prepared me for how crazy this whole journey has been um within the first month actually life kind of seemed perfect everything was going well um, I hit 100 in the ARP on week three. Around the same time, I got rid of my crutches. I was walking. Um, the first time I dropped to zero was in week four, and it lasted an hour. Um, the pain would go up and down, but the progress was definitely there, and it was very fast. It was great until around week six when my pain started getting back to what it was, and um, I was averaging eights and nines for the next few weeks. Around week nine, my back pain started dropping to sixes and sevens, which is when I thought that I was finally catching a break. And then week 11, my pots started acting up and that was not fun. <laughs> um, the patients that were here and the staff that are here can tell you how much I just struggled every single day. 
I average 12 to 15 painting spells a day. Um, a lot of the times you couldn't have a conversation with me because I would probably pass out in the middle of it. Um, I don't think I would have made it without any of you guys. Like, if I didn't have you guys around, I would have never made it this far. And the therapist, the team, everyone has done everything that they possibly can to get me better. And I really appreciate that. So for the next two months, I was averaging 12 to 15 painting spells a day. I struggled to remember anything. During this journey, a lot of the times I had some people telling me that I should just leave because things weren't getting better. And I'm not going to lie, I considered it so many times. And I remember walking into your office and being like, I'm done. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. I remember talking to Chelsea and being like, I'm exhausted. I just want to be out of here. And um, I just had a lot of doubts because I didn't know if it, I made the right choice by staying when I had so much going on at the time. Um, it felt like no matter how hard I tried and no matter how much effort I put into this journey, I just felt like it was never enough to get me where I wanted to be. I came in every day just fainting for a while and um, I did everything I possibly could. Um, I didn't take any days off and it just seemed like things weren't working out. Um, as I slowly started giving up, most of the people around me felt that way too. But there was one person that went through this journey with me since the start and it was my animal therapist, Chelsea. Um, I just want to thank you for everything that you've done to get me to where I'm at right now. You've listened to me during my worst days, um, but you also celebrated my good days. You took care of me when I couldn't do that to myself, and you never gave up on me. I remember doing the sessions, it would be just an hour session, and I would pass out like nine times, and it didn't matter if I passed out nine times or ten times in a session, you never gave up, and it meant so much because I gave up at some point. So many people around me started going like, oh, it's not getting better, and it was rough. Um, I remember that during the days where I just wanted to stop fighting, you would tell me that I'm not allowed to do that, and you would say that even if I do, you're going to put in all your energy and effort to support me until I'm ready to get back up again and fight. Um, I... Just, you literally just came up with a new plan every single day. I thought at some point you'd run out of ideas, but you never did. <laughs> like, they were just going. And um, we did some of the wildest, most interesting stuff that, you know, it, it has worked. And a lot of it was just, I don't know what you were thinking at night, but it's a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> um, I remember, literally, Tuesday this week. I was in my room and I was sitting down on the floor and I was just crying and um, I was in so much pain. Both my legs felt like they were on fire and I remember just sitting there and um, just praying to God and you know just saying please help me I can't do this anymore and it was a really hard time and I sat there just thinking what else can I do I've done everything I possibly can and it wasn't working and I was just I felt like such a failure and felt like I disappointed everyone that believed in me and um I remember after like crying for two hours I finally got up and I was like okay I'm gonna just sit in bed and um put the arp on my legs on the spots that Chelsea told me about the previous day and I did that and I was still having a mental breakdown even <laughs> I was doing that but I was just everywhere I was a mess and literally an hour later as I was still continuing to cry I just stopped for a second and I was like hold on something's wrong and I was like I don't feel pain in my legs I just feel nothing and I remember just, the sh I was so shocked that it kind of stopped me from crying at the moment. And I was like, wait, 
So I remember taking pads off and just going like, is this, did this work? Like, is this, is this finally it? And I, I just continued crying again, but it was a good crying this time. And the first person that I've contacted and let them know that I hit a zero was you. Um, I remember just messaging you and being like, hey, like, I don't know, I'm, you're not going to believe this. I don't believe it either, but I'm at a zero. <laughs> and um, I told you that first because I knew that we have been waiting for this for ages. We've been fighting for ages, and I knew that this meant to you as much as it did to me. Um, so... No matter how many years go by, I'll never ever forget you, and I'll never forget the impact you had on me. You'll always have a special place in my heart. I mean it. <laughs> um, also, I want to thank Dr. T for the support that she gave me um, during the six months that I've been here. Um, you kept your office open for me whenever I needed it. You knew that I wasn't the type of person to talk about how I felt, and you just told me if you ever needed to cry at anything or just you know wanted a minute come into my office I'm gonna leave and I'll just give you the space <laughs> to cry and I did I had some pretty rough days and I was like I'm just gonna cry um so thank you so much for that and we got to share so much laughter and memories that are forever cherished in your office where we would just laugh nonstop every single time I went in there and it just made my day a lot better um ellie i promised i was gonna call you out <laughs> and um i also want to thank you for just being very special i'm not the type of person to talk about how i feel but you are very one of the very few people that i actually spoke to you about how i truly feel and i actually got down that faking type of i'm fine situation that, by the way, everyone got used to that, I'm fine. And they're like, oh, you're not. <laughs> and um, Ellie, you never judged me, ever. And you accepted me for who I am. You always called me out when I said something negative about myself. And it really made a huge difference, just being more positive and thinking about myself in a better way. Sierra and Tyler. <laughs> yeah you're coming guys <laughs> um the both of you gave me so much positive energy and vibes by singing and having concerts in laser that was great <laughs> um it seriously lightened my mood and it just made my day so much better Sierra, i remember that the first time that we met i was actually unconscious on the couch in the other building and when i woke up you were like hey i'm Sierra. nice to meet you and i was like <laughs> nice to meet you too <laughs> um you have seen me during a lot of these rough days when I felt vulnerable and just wanted to, you know, stop doing everything that I was doing. And you always made sure to give me the privacy I needed. And even if it meant taking me to a room where I could just sit there and cry, and you did it. And it meant so much to me. I also want to thank Jenna. I don't know where she's at, but... And I thank you for being so supportive to me during this journey and understanding what I was going through. I remember one time on Thursday, they had a graduation and I was just passing out nonstop in Dr. T's office. <laughs> and you knew that I wanted to watch the graduations, but I couldn't because I would just pass out whenever I got up. So you actually got your laptop and we sat there together watching it live. And I just want to say that that really healed a part of me because I didn't feel like I had to miss out on things because I was sick. So thank you for doing that. Um, Aniston, you joined a few of my sessions with me and Chelsea, and although you were tough, I really enjoyed spending time with you. <laughs> and you have a really great sense of humor. You guys both have the same sense of humor. <laughs> it's great. Um, honestly, it was just fun. So thank you. I'd also like to thank Heather, Shane, Kim, Mabelli, Joy, Jennifer, um, Sean, Eric, and little Katie. <laughs> Even though it has been a while since I've done some of these treatments, 
I just think all of you still played a very important role in me being right here in this moment. I wouldn't have been able to do it without you guys. Um, I also want to thank all the other staff members too, because all of you contributed to my journey at some point, whether it was by brainstorming, brainstorming and trying to um, come up with a way or new ideas that you could potentially make me get better faster and having those meetings and discussing things. Um, or if it was by helping me whenever I passed out and making me laugh while, when I got out of it, I'll always be very grateful for all of it and I'll miss all of you so much. Um, and actually after I finished my hippie session today and I went back home and I was getting ready for the graduation, I just kept crying and I couldn't believe that I'm here right now because if you asked me two weeks ago, I would have been like, I'm nowhere near ringing that bell. And um, Chelsea has seen it. Ellie has seen it. I spoke to her on Tuesday and I was like, I am ringing that bell, girl. <laughs> and she was like, why not? And um, things can change so quickly. In one single night, I was full body zeros and I still don't believe it. And I still kind of just, you know, start moving around and I'm like, wait, it's still holding. <laughs> um, but I'm just so grateful for everything. And I'm so grateful that I get to stand here right now and say that I'm in remission because I couldn't see myself doing that. Um, after being at Spirit for six months, the waiting room also feels like family now. We all became one. I've made so many friendships and I'm still in contact with most of the people that were here and graduated. Um, and the people that were here when I first started have supported me so much through texts and FaceTimes and they have done so much. Miranda, I want to thank you for being such an inspiration. Uh, I remember every single day I came in and we both had such a rough time in different ways, but I knew that you kind of understood what it's like, you know, and just seeing you fight to get what you want and fighting to get the life that you want has pushed me so much and it made me fight for myself too. So thank you for that. Um, a shout out to some of the patients, Paula, Raven, Ariella, Ruby, Jake, Ted, um, Kendall, um, Robert, and Hannah for helping me push through some really hard days. Uh, even though a lot of them have graduated, they have been in contact, checking on me every single day, just making sure that I'm pushing through, that I'm making it, and a lot of them are watching now, so, um, and one last thing that I wanted to say was for those around the world with chronic illness and for those that are here fighting every single day to get their life back, I just want you to know that I'm so proud of you. Um, most people don't know your story, your your struggle, your hustle, and your prayers. Most people don't know the silent battles that you're um, going through. And if you don't hear this often, just know that I'm proud of you. Hang on and keep fighting. And finally, finally, now, after six months of hard work, I get to ring this bell while being pain-free in both my legs and my back. So thank you. Real quick, I just wanted to tell you how proud I am of you. We have climbed a, the tallest hill you can think of, but you know what? You did it. That was you. You did all of this. You showed up every day. And you put in the work, and here we are, okay? Don't ever give up on yourself. You worked really hard for this, okay? We did some crazy stuff today. We did some line drills. <laughs> oh, we did. <laughs> we did some bunny hops for a while, run up the stairs. And if you came out with me, we did some crazy obstacles, just random stuff that you, you know, face every day, so. Thank you. You ready? Okay, yeah. It's your time.